in life we come to or we experience monumental moments that define or change our lives. Hello, Mr. Riviera? And as exciting or as challenging as they may be, those moments always come with choices at about the same magnitude. There were some struggles of losing everything and losing the life. Choices for the brave of heart who are willing to go against the common grain. The love I felt from Jesus just consumed me. And push into the height of the uncharted or those rarely charted places. Hi, it's Terry Copley. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I don't know what time it is there for you, but whatever time it is, thank you for waking up. <laughs> um, okay, so today I do want to talk to you about those rarely charted places. Uh, I'm going to go to the book of John, chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. And it says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit. This is a continuing. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus reiterated this two times because the Father, the Father is seeking this. The Father is crying out from heaven. And I know you might say to me, nope, 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 the Father does not cry out in heaven. Nope, 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 the Father is just happy and full of joy. No, that's not true. The Father has feelings and he cries out in heaven. And he's looking for those that will worship him in spirit to be restored, reunited with him. Because if you're not in spirit, then you're on earth and you're in the carnal mindset. You're in your carnality and you're in the flesh realm. And I'm going to speak about that today. Listen. We all know that there's a lot of things happening in this world today. And is it the very end? I don't think so. But are we coming close? Are things progressing? Yes. And I'll tell you one thing I believe with all of my heart. I believe that the time is now, is coming, not now, but now as in coming, that the sons of God will be made manifest on the earth. That's the spiritual giants. That's the spiritual giants being restored. I'm not necessarily talking about physical giants, and I know there's those of which I find I don't follow that theory. Uh, but I do follow the theory of that we are spiritual giants. And when we leave this body and we go to heaven, we are going to turn back into our original state as stature and height. I asked Father one time, he said, well, he said to me, Terry, do you, and this is through prayer, through intimate worship of prayer and meditation. And he said to me, do you know why I made insects? And I said, no. And he said, I made those as examples of how little you are and how big I am. And he said, and for types of people, he said, most are like cockroaches. They just hide in dark places and they're filthy and they're harmless. But there's other kinds. And I, I said to him, oh, I said, but Father, isn't it a little bit strange in heaven that you're so big? I mean, he's so big that heaven cannot contain him. He's bigger than heaven. <laughs> it's hard to wrap your mind around that, but, but he is. And I said, Father, isn't that a bit strange? And he said, it's because you don't know who you are. He said, do you think that your little tiny things walk around the big giant? No. 
when you leave this body, you will return to your original structure. You said he made us a little lower than the angels. That is a twofold. That is in like, you know, our honor in our, uh, uh, in a sense of our power and whatnot, but it is also in stature. So I'm kind of went sideways a little bit, but the Father is looking for that, and the time is coming. The time is coming where the fullness is going to happen because it's the cry of the Father's heart. Listen, the body right now there's a, there's a lot of things beginning to take place. One of the things that is going to take place is that there's the body of Christ. And the body of Christ has a threefold, okay, in many ways. But in this aspect that I'm talking about is there is, on the one hand, there is the sort of, uh, well, we call it the religious church. Uh, the, where it's a place where the body limits God as if he never rose again. And on the other hand, is there's the body that of Christ that is walking in the carnality, in this, like, grace, grace, I can do anything because he loves me, and yes, he does. But you will be limited. You will be cut off. You will be diminished. And you will be diminished because you've diminished yourself in your, in your stature, in your height. So there's the body that lives in carnality. And on the one hand, they're going to say to this other body that is raising up, out of this midst is coming another body that is the remnant. And on the one hand, they're going to say to you, you're false. This is not true. You cannot... You know, there are no miracles today. You cannot walk in the Spirit. You cannot see God. But the Bible says that the only one who's seen God is that of the Son, the only begotten, who is seated at the right hand of the Father. But Christ is in me. And once Christ is in me, then I am seated at the right hand of the Father. And through Christ, I can see the Father again. Of my own, you cannot. Of your own, you cannot see God. You can only try to imagine it yourself. You cannot see God outside of Christ, but in Christ, seated in heavenly places. Christ in me, I can see. The eyes of my understanding can be opened, and I can see the Father, and I can walk with the Father in the garden again. There are going to be those on the one side that say, no, no, you can't. No, you're cut off. No, we're going to limit him as if Christ never rose again. And on the other side, they're going to say, how dare you? How dare you? You're, that's a religious spirit. You can't say that. That's a religious, legalistic spirit. Because I'm telling you, what's going to happen is that the remnant now are going to be bound with the fear of the Lord. That's right. I'm telling you, there's a fear of the Lord coming back on the body because we've come a full circle. And that full circle is the fear of the Lord is coming on the one hand and the spiritual man is coming on the other end and they're going to lock hands together and that's going to make the full circle. And that's where the, the remnant is going to come up out of this circle. And yes, there's going to be division in the body. Yes, there is. Yes, if you're a remnant, yes, you might be hated. Yes, if you're a remnant, you might be misunderstood. And maybe some of you don't understand this right now. Because there's milk. There's milk in the Word. And there's manna in the Word. The milk is for the babies. The manna is for the children. And the meat is for the adults. This is not meat. This is milk and manna. So some of you may not understand this, but I'm speaking to those of you who do. For the remnant that is being called out, that there's a stirring inside of you. My friend and I, uh, Shauna, that does God's Girls, we were talking on the way over here, and she said, I just have this 
this, tur this turning in my stomach and this, this travail, this travail that's happening. And I said, I have it too, Shauna. I've had it for like three, four months. This just travail inside that God is in heaven and he's looking for his remnant. And he's asking you, are you willing? Are you willing to come? Are you willing to lay aside your life, your wants, your desires, your dreams? I know what that's like. I know exactly what that's like. Listen, I used to be an actress. I used to be, I used to be somewhat famous. I had my own TV series and I laid it down for the Lord. I laid it down and I went through two wildernesses. I always hear one wilderness, but God took me through two. The first wilderness, I lost everything. The second wilderness, he lifted from me and removed my pride, my spiritual pride and my spiritual, you know, all the, the religious junk off of me. And, and, and during that time, I was like Peter. I, I, I didn't understand what I was going through. Like, I didn't understand. And I got offered a movie, a Christian movie, and I did it. And I thought, oh, it was such a blessing from God. And then one day, I was praying. I kept praying, because you keep pushing in. I kept praying, and then all of a sudden, the Father came upon me in visions, and I had breakthrough. And you know what happened? Right in the midst of this, you know, mountaintop experience that I was going through, I got a call and they offered me to do a movie. And I'm telling you, I've studied acting and it was a movie that was like, you know, when you're a comedy actress, all you want to do is do drama. And this was a drama. This is a drama movie. It was about a woman dying and trying to reconcile with her daughter. And the call came and they said, you did this read for us two years ago and we're ready to make the movie. We want to offer it to you. And I just went, what? And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is what I've dreamed of. I mean, it wasn't a big movie, but it didn't matter. As an actor, you just want to act. You just want to do those good roles. It's that creativeness in you that wants to live. And I went to the Father and I said, Father, do you want me to do this part? And he answered me right away and he said, you can if you want to. And I thought on that for a minute and I thought, I know what you're saying. It's a choice. It's a choice. And I wouldn't do anything. There is nothing in this world that, would, that I would choose rather than to be on the mountaintop with the Lord for even as long as I can abide there. And I called them and told them, I'm sorry, I, I can't do it right now. And you'll have to get somebody else. I'm so sorry. I'm just saying to you, yes, it's a choice. It's a choice, but so much greater. There's so much greater. There is revelation of one minute, one minute in the presence of God, one minute of truly being in the presence of God is greater than anything in this lifetime. I know that sounds trite. I know you've probably even heard it before, but I'm telling you as just one girl, one girl who has experienced the fame of this world and has experienced moments in the presence of the Father. There's nothing like the presence of the Father. Nothing on this earth. So there's, there's milk and there's manna and there's meat. And Jesus said, I can't give you the meat now. And, and we can't. We can't receive the meat now because we'll get mad. We'll get mad and we'll run away from the whole thing. But there'll be a time when the sons of God, this remnant, will rise up and they will partake of the meat. The meat 
of the word and the meat of the kingdom. And that's going to be a glorious time. So here, here we have this like amazing life that you can choose, that you can choose to live in. It has to be your choice. And it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. But many have come this way. Many have. You're, listen, I literally was, when I first surrendered my life to the Lord, I got a call on the phone, and they offered me to play the life of Marilyn Monroe. Well, I wanted to do that because I felt like I understood the innocence and the, the lack of feeling loved by the Father, having a Father's love. I knew what that felt like. I knew what it felt like not to be loved, even though I had the love of the world. And the Father had been telling me in my prayer time, you're going to be offered something I don't want you to do. You're going to be, and I was going around to my friends saying, I'm going to be offered something he doesn't want me to do. And I kind of like made light of it in a way. And then one day the offer came in. They asked, they asked me to play Marilyn Monroe's life story. And I said, no. And they said, please, Terry, let us just send you the script. And I said, no. Because I knew if they sent me the script, it would be harder for me to say no. And I said, no. And I walked out of my house, and I literally just said, Lord, because that was so hard. It was so hard. And you know what the Lord said to me, Father? said, many have come this way, Terry many and I saw in the eyes of my understanding I saw I saw a vision of a high mountain in a pilgrimage of people walking in this desert and all I did was saw my little person go get in the back of this pilgrimage that pilgrimage has a destination and it's called paradise and it's on earth as it is in heaven and the remnant are going to experience that and more. You know, I'm sorry, I'm just going. I'm, I'm nothing of what is here. But one time I went before the Father when during these experiences. And the first, just recently, I've, I've, I've had many experiences of going to heaven. You may not understand that, but maybe someday you will. Because it's the Father's delight to show you heaven. But recently, not, not in the too far, just recently, um, they, I went to heaven, and um, I was told I was going to be shown all of heaven. And I said, no, 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 no. I need to see the Father. I need to get to the Father right now. I don't know why I said that. I need to get to the Father. Anyway, the next time I went into prayer, and I don't look. I do not conjure. I do not go into worship saying, oh, look around, look around, let me see, let me see what I can imagine. No, it's conjuring. And we get into spiritism. Not, we're spiritual, we're not walking in as a spiritist. There's a big difference. We don't conjure, we worship. We don't conjure for our will, we worship for his will. But the Father said to me, I got before the Father, and he said to me, Terry, he said, I'm looking for my tent. And he said, I was promised a tenth, and I don't have it yet. That's his remnant. And he said, the, the body, the Christian body thinks, they think that I'm going to pour out my glory on them. And he said, I'm not going to do it. And he said, I will not do it. And, he, and, and I backed up. And he said to me, you've never been under my glory. And when I saw his glory, power glory, it would, there was the crystal was like really, really wide. It was in, impenetrable, impenetrable. And the lightning was like a, 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 a jagged lightning rod or something. And I said, no, no, I haven't. He said, no, you haven't. 
He said, because if you had, your body would not be able to take it. Your body would be harmed. And he said, yes, Father. And he said, the body thinks that I am going to pour out my glory. I will not do it. I will not do it. And I backed up. And I, I said to the Father, I said, but Father, I said, your word says that in the last days that you're going to pour out your spirit on all flesh. And he spoke to me immediately. And he said, I said my spirit, not my glory. And I backed up. And I said, oh, my goodness. You're right. There is a difference. And I'm telling you, I know. I know. One of the things that upsets me as I've grown more and more in the Lord is that we are a fast food people. We want everything now. We want to have it now. And we we don't want to work for anything. Not that it works, but it is choices. And it is our pushing in. And it is a, a, a journey with him. We want everything now. And we want to diminish God. And I'm telling you something. God will not be diminished. He won't. He will let you fall. As hard as that is for him, he will let you fall. And he'll go and try to pick you up again. But he will not be diminished. We can diminish ourselves, which we have. We diminish ourselves all the time. That's why we're like walking around with no power, just little tiny bits of his presence. Little raindrops. Whoa! The glory is here. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's not. That's not the glory. That's not his glory power. That is his presence. We cannot diminish God anymore because it makes the world think that we have a powerless God. And we don't. It's not God. It's us. It's us because we don't walk in the spirit. We're afraid. We don't walk in the spirit. We don't, we don't surrender our lives to him. And we walk trying to pretend we have it. And we don't. We don't. And it's obvious to the world we don't have it. You know who has it? The world has it. The world has the Father's goods in their spiritism. And it's not theirs. It's ours. And I'm asking the kings of the land to stand up, to stand up and go back, go out there into the, to the, to the enemy's camp and bring back what belongs to the Father because you don't have it. You don't have it. And the ones of you that have risen up to some height and some great stature, you know where you lose it? Because you want the goods of this world. You're still partaking of the tree of good and evil. Because you want your ten mansions. And you want all your cars. And every. I'm not saying to be poor. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But you want more. You've been, you have sold out. You have to know. You have sold out. And one thing I've learned from being with the Father. He will always tell me the truth. He will never lie. He will never lie. You know why? He's not a deceiver. And he's never going to let you stay diminished unless you want to. He's always going to tell you the truth to pick you up. Because he wants you to be a son of God on this earth. Restored back to that mountaintop. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. And you know what? The father is grieved. I hear people in the church say, oh, yippee, let's go to the throne and see how happy God is. Let's go to the throne and see the, uh, the joy of God. Yes, there is joy. There is joy for the babies. There is. I'm not talking to the babies now. As a matter of fact, you should have shut this. You should have turned it off a while ago. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but um, I'm talking to you, the, at least the children. I'm I'm talking manna because I'm talking what I've learned in heaven. And I'm telling you straight. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you. You don't have it. You don't. You maybe have it by faith, but it's not made manifest. Because you've got got to lay down your life. You've got to lay down your life. And you've got to give it to the Lord and start partaking of the tree of good and evil. Who cares what you have if you don't have God's power and it's not made manifest on this earth? Who cares? God doesn't care. He knows you diminished yourself. He knows it. And the people know it too. The world knows it. That's why they don't want him. 
because they got his goods and spiritism. I'm so sorry. I just went somewhere else. But um, let me pray because I got to close. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, I just I ask for your grace, Father God, in your mercy, Father God, in the word. And Father, I ask that you bind the fear of the Lord to every single person that's listening right now, Father God, that they would not sin against you. They would not diminish themselves anymore. Father God, that you and your love, do you know the fear of the Lord is the highest form of love that we can give to him? That's what that spirit is, one of the seven spirits. It's the highest form of love you can give to him. So I pray it. Be bound to you. Be bound to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.